Every year, we are reminded that regression is a harsh, brutal reality in the NFL, and the 2019 Chicago Bears are yet another cautionary tale. Just one year prior, the team was on a roll. They won the division with a 12-4 record, but were stunningly sent home by a couple of soul-crushing doinks in the wild card. They appeared close. It was in their grasp. 2019 would be the season where they would push past that horrific loss and take the next step deeper into the playoffs. To get there, they needed their third-year quarterback, Mitch Trubisky to take his next step, but regression is one cold, hard son of a Mitch. With the weight of the team's fortunes on his shoulders, Trubisky slowly, week by week, broke down. What happened? How did he fall apart so dramatically? When the Bears hired Matt Nagy in 2018 and his offense finished top 10 in scoring, it seemed that Trubisky was on the verge of a breakout. But instead, he struggled with accuracy, mechanics, processing defensive coverages, pocket presence, and just about everything else. His six 6.1 yards per attempt was dead last in the league, his deep ball numbers were beyond abysmal, and the offense finished 29th in scoring and yards per drive. The ground game was terrible, the offensive line was worse, but what was most painful to watch was Mitch's steep, steady, season-long decline. It seemed like every game, the Bears' defense was good enough to keep the score close, but Mitch was always just incompetent enough to let the game slip away. It all began opening night, week one, at home against the Packers. The Bears ended up losing 10-3, and many of Trubisky's struggles with processing coverage and defenders' leverage were put on full display. On 3rd and 15, the Bears line up with three receivers to the field with an all-curl concept breaking at the sticks, with each route adjusting towards open space in the Packers' zone coverage. The Bears love aligning three receivers to a side, because it floods that side of the defense and gives Trubisky pre-snap coverage indicators. Defenses count receivers from outside in. When the Bears put 1-2 three to the left and Trubisky sees corners over one and two, but linebacker Blake Martinez the closest to number three, it's very likely zone coverage. The Packers are playing zone. They're in a quarter, quarter, half, or cover six zone defense. Since these two are playing deep fourths and the number two receiver is pulling a defender to the flat, Trubisky just has to read Martinez's leverage underneath and throw to the curl window where he is not. More advanced quarterbacks will use their eyes to manipulate that underneath backer then throw away from him. But Trubisky stares down Allen Robinson the entire time and tries to squeeze in a throw he never should have. What he should have done is come off a Rob and thrown to the open Taylor Gabriel since Martinez is hanging in the seam and has zone eyes during the play. Not only did Trubisky fail to read his leverage, but the secondaries as well. Each deep quarters defender is responsible for the vertical of each of these receivers. Look at the positioning of each of them. Gabriel's release has forced Kevin King to open his hips in anticipation of the vertical, whereas A-Rob's release doesn't flip Darnell Savage's hips, who's waiting to trigger on the curl. Gabriel is the safer option due to both Martinez's positioning and the secondary's leverage, but Trubisky jams in the throw. Watch his eyes during the entire play. He doesn't come off A-Rob for even a second. This screams to Martinez, Savage, and the rest of the defense exactly where he's about to throw the ball. Savage sees it the entire way, jumps the curl, and really should have come away with an interception. Despite the processing errors, Trubisky's mechanics actually look pretty good. His motion begins on time immediately after his back foot hits, his entire body is aimed directly at his target, his front shoulder and foot are pointed straight at the receiver, that front arm is tucked which helps keeps the front shoulder closed, his right hip pulls through, his arm is positioned at 1 o'clock about 8 inches above his head, and his momentum finishes downhill straight through his target. He's had mechanical issues in the past, so despite mustering three points and losing, this was the silverest of silver linings. But no. Both his throw mechanics and general presence in the pocket became worse and worse as the season progressed. Despite being pressured just 22% of the time, which was only the 18th most in the league, it was clear that the pressure was getting to him. The Bears' pass protection was often pretty terrible, and the effect it had on Trubisky even when he wasn't pressured was evident. His footwork eroded, he often saw ghosts which sped up his process, and his poise quickly declined. In the fourth quarter against the Chargers in Week 8, the Bears are up 16-10. Whenever you prepare for the Chargers,
chargers, it's important to understand how they structure their cover 3 zone scheme so you can attack it. There are a ton of cover 3 beaters that you can use, but the problem is that's exactly what they practice against every single week. One of those beaters is called post wheel or what some teams refer to as peel. It's designed to manipulate the cornerback into carrying the post which creates space up the sideline for the wheel, but the Bears have added a wrinkle. To help their disastrous offensive line, they swapped out a receiver for an extra lineman. Now they have no receiving threats to the left. If you're running post wheel against cover 3, you want the safety threatened or at least somewhat occupied so the cornerback has to choose between the post or the wheel. When the safety sees no threats at all from his right, he can focus all his attention on the 3 receiver side. What's worse is Casey Hayward is the cornerback and he's been seeing peel concepts for the last 5 years. He knows he doesn't have to carry the post. He can just pass that off to the safety while he watches Mitch the entire time and just camps under the ball for an easy pick. Despite the result, the play still had opportunities to succeed. If Mitch reads the curl flat linebacker's leverage, he can hit A-Rob for at least a 6 yard gain on 2nd and 8, or can anticipate the open space and throw early before the wheel route comes out of his break and try and hit him back shoulder. He actually does try and throw back shoulder, but it's so late that it's not even close. Why was it so late? Well, this is where Trubisky's footwork starts to erode. He feels pressure from the left and starts to drift out too far to the right. If he quickly resets, he can read the coverage and hit A-Rob for the easy throw, or attempt the more difficult option by anticipating the wheel before it comes open. It is 10 times more difficult to read coverage while moving, and look what it does to his mechanics. Mitch will often get to about halfway through his motion looking actually pretty good, but watch how his body rises up into the air. This drags his arm behind his head causing an earlier release which often results in the ball sailing, and instead of driving towards his target, he ends up throwing off his back foot. It turns into more of a shot put with no power whatsoever and hangs up in the air for Hayward to intercept. The Chargers failed to capitalize on the turnover, so just three minutes later, the Bears are looking for the dagger to put the game out of reach and Matt Nagy even dials up the perfect play call. He understands the Chargers' tendencies and coverage deficiencies in their cover 3 zone. When they defend 3 receiver formations, specifically 3 verticals, the number 3 receiver is often matched on a linebacker. Nagy knows if you can hold the backside cornerback with a short outbreaking route, there will be just 2 deep defenders for 3 receivers. With the deep 3rd corner accounting for number 1 and the safety accounting for 2, the Chargers have to match Taylor Gabriel's 4-2-7 speed with a linebacker, a complete and utter mismatch. This should be a touchdown every single time. A good throw from Trubisky puts the Chargers in the coffin, but the pass sails over Gabriel's head. Inconsistent mechanics are really difficult to overcome. It affects accuracy and causes inefficiency. Trubisky can often get to that good point in his motion where his base is solid and his front shoulder is pointed at his target, but way too often his front leg locks out which stops the rest of his body from properly rotating and causes him to rise upwards instead of forwards. This makes him fall off to the left, sucking any potential velocity, power, or accuracy away from his pass. These missed opportunities gave the Chargers a chance to hang around. A minute later, they scored a touchdown to go up one, and the Bears lost after missing another last second field goal in heartbreaking fashion. Every single week, it was evident their unreliable pass protection took its toll on Trubisky and caused him to struggle. After he kept getting hit almost instantaneously, you could see him start to lose his confidence. His process in the pocket sped up, and he became uncomfortable even when the protection was perfect. The primetime Week 11 matchup against the Rams was one of the most frustrating nights of the year. The Bears scored just 7 points, and Trubisky constantly missed open receivers throughout the game. The Rams are playing what's called Cover 1 Robber or Cover 1 Cut. Man coverage on each receiver with the weak safety rotating down to take away any underneath slants or crossing routes. Since Allen Robinson is in a reduced split and is inside the numbers, the Rams have called one robber in anticipation of the Bears running mesh, which is overlapping shallow crosses usually paired with an over the ball route behind it. But Nagy is one step ahead. He knows that's what they think he's running, but A-Rob's reduced split is actually to create space up the sideline for Tariq Cohen's wheel route. The Bears designed this play to get Cohen matched on a linebacker, and with the coverage rotating towards the middle of the field and the backer peeling with Cohen, they get exactly what they want. Cohen torches him as expected, but instead of lofting the pass down the field over his shoulder, Trubisky for god knows what reason tries to throw 
back shoulder. This is a gift wrapped 70 yard touchdown in the making, but not this time. Even though their offense is mostly designed for Mitch to read just one half of the field, he gives a full scan from left to right. If you watch his eyes, he sees the safety rotating back to the deep middle, he sees the fake shallow whip route covered, then sees the strong safety committing to cut it, so in his head he assumes A-Rob will break into that open space. But when he isn't open, this is where Trubisky's issues in the pocket are apparent. He's not pressured whatsoever, but just watch him. He's not comfortable. It's not fluid. It's, it's unnatural. He's overthinking. The leverage of the linebacker in no way indicates the ball should be thrown back shoulder and there's no reason to throw it there. It's just another example of Trubisky's lost confidence. Heading into week 15, the Bears record sat at a still solid 7-6, but traveling to Green Bay, it was do or die. A Bears loss would eliminate them from a shot at the playoffs and a chance for redemption. They dial up a dagger concept on the left and a vertical with a check release to the right. The Packers counter with cover 3 sky, Sky meaning the safety is the curl flat defender, and on top of it they mix in a four man creeper blitz. The dagger concept consists of a clear out route, usually a seam or sometimes a deep cross, to create a window for the backside dig. So Trubisky will read the crosser and key the underneath defenders. If they cover the cross, he will try and zip in the dig behind them. The Packers do a great job of maintaining zone integrity and not over committing. If Trubisky keeps his poise in the pocket, he can loft the crosser past the linebacker into the open space over the head of the safety playing the flat, but instead he's completely off balance and wildly whips the ball outside for no gain. We can see on this play just how bad his pocket presence, footwork, and mechanics became by the end of the season. This type of movement during the play makes it virtually impossible for him to succeed anywhere near a consistent level. He feels the pressure from the right side which gets 100% picked up by the line, but as he's reading dagger to his left, he slowly slides in that direction and into pressure from the tackle. His center absorbs the blow and has him blocked. The center thinks he's pushing the tackle out of harm's way, but because Trubisky drifts in the pocket, he's created unnecessary pressure. Instead of stepping up and settling in the space where there's nobody within five yards, then waiting till his receivers come free, he makes an ugly off-balance throw to the first receiver he sees open. This is college-level footwork in the pocket. You have to reset to find the soft spot the offensive line has created, but poor fundamentals compounded throughout the season and buried Trubisky. The Bears lost the game, the season essentially ended, and all the hopes and dreams heading into 2019 were thoroughly destroyed. The frustration for the entire team, city, and fan base was difficult to watch. Heading into 2020, the regression of Mitch Trubisky has created major question marks for the entire front office and future of the team. They brought in BDN Foles for competition, but I honestly don't see how Mitch can beat him out and hang on to this job. Now, was this entire season's failure solely on him? No, definitely not. The Bears had a bottom five offensive line and regression hit several other areas of the team, but Trubisky was without a doubt the main problem. I hope he rebounds from this past season and finds future success. I really do. But when his accuracy, mechanics, and coverage processing completely eroded like they did on film, without drastic immediate improvement, it's going to be almost impossible. Just one year in the NFL can make all the difference. If the Bears and the city of Chicago want to return to their 2018 dominance, I have a few words of advice. Mitch Trubisky ain't it.